What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Social Media Mindset Podcast. And I'm excited because a few weeks back, I was speaking in San Antonio. And, you know, when you travel the country and speak, you meet interesting people. You meet people that you love. You meet people that you might hope you never have to interact with again. And I just so happened to meet somebody that I really connected with. I love her message. And I went and looked her up on social media afterwards and was like, all right, this girl's got it going on. She knows what she's doing. And so I'm so excited to have Sarah Bloomstrom on the show today. Sarah is in the title world down in San Antonio, Texas, and it is her job to fill a pipeline. And the way she does it is by doing a lot of what I do, teaching, educating, equipping, loving our realtors, encouraging realtors to get their butts out in front of the camera. And so I'm so pumped, Sarah, for you to kind of tell your story. And, and so before we jump into that, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kyle. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Of course. And so you were telling me that, you know, you haven't really been in the real estate space very long because you spent 17 years as an educator in the school system. And so just tell us, like, give us a little bit of your background and then we'll kind of jump into like how you found yourself in this crazy world that we call real estate marketing. Okay. So 17 years teaching about 10 of those, I think were in special education. Okay, well, I like to say teaching and special education found me. I had just finished traveling Europe after I graduated from college. I had a backpack and wandered around and came back and started teaching and there was a special education position open. So I took it. I loved it. I worked in a self-contained classroom, which means kids that need an extra level of support yeah. in a specialized environment. It was really fun. Um, it was a lot of work. My first year I cried every day, I but bet. I think what it taught me is that hard work wins every time. And so teaching, if you can teach, you can do anything. Yeah. And that is one of the things that I brought with me into this new career. So I taught middle school on top of that for almost all of those years. I worked for the DOD for a couple of years as a civilian teacher. I moved over to Germany and worked for two years outside of Nuremberg, which is in wow. the summer. It was amazing. Traveled all the time. Fantastic experience. And then came back, worked in San Antonio some more. And then I went over to Uganda, which is the eastern part of Africa, and lived along the Nile River and taught wow. pre-K through, at the time, grade five. My classroom overlooked the Nile River. I could hear it. Yeah. And then one of the special things about that was that I got to actually train and work alongside teachers there, Ugandan teachers. So that was really, really special. And again, I think all of those experiences brought me, it taught me courage. It taught me to be brave and fearless. And I got to bring all of my teaching experience into this new career. So in 2019, about six months before the official pandemic hit the US, yeah. I had decided that summer to not go back to teaching because the the other thing about me is that um, I'm single and um, I really have it in my heart to foster and adopt. And I wanted to do that and just who I am and the way I function in the world. I knew I could not teach all day. Yeah. And then come home and also raise children by myself that might also need an extra level of love and support. So I made a very conscious effort to get out of teaching and try to go find something that would afford me a little more flexibility and hopefully earning potential. Yeah. Um, and so I, I tell this story with laughter. My, my boss and my manager know this, but I met now, my now coworker. And she said, uh, we were hanging out one day. I, I had never met her at this point. And she said, well, would you ever want to do what I do? And she explained it to me. And I said, no, thank you. That sounds awful. <laughs> no, thank you. Cause she's like, you walk into offices and nobody wants to see you and nobody wants to meet with you. And you call people on the phone that you don't know. <laughs> so fun. I was like, mm. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? All day I stand in front of an audience that does not want to buy what I'm selling. Right. Middle schoolers don't care what I have to say. Yeah. Not that realtors are like middle schoolers. Please don't hear me saying that. But the work ethic and the the journey of building relationships sure. was not unfamiliar to me. So interviewed, actually fell in love with the idea of the job, took the job. And I had a mentor right before I got into the business that said, you better hurry up and figure out how to differentiate yourself because otherwise you're just like all the other title reps in San Antonio. Yeah. And for those of you listening in Texas, the title industry is heavily regulated by the state. You know, we can't go in and wheel and deal and cut prices and this and that and that. So you really have to figure out what do I have mm -hmm. that will set me apart. So I just started doing a lot of social listening and saying, what's, 
what are some common pain points that agents have? Because I can't go in and deliver donuts and tacos every day. I just yeah. I can't do it. And I yeah. can't pound the phones for eight hours every day, like a telemarketer. I did. And I still do pound the phones, cold calling and calling in general will build so much courage. Oh, no doubt. And work ethic and tenacity. I highly recommend it for if for no other reason than just to build your character and to figure out who you are and what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. So um, I still do that. I I started out doing a lot of that. And then I just was like, I've got to figure out what people need and what people want and marketing and social media just kept coming up. And so where I originally started was to really get really good at YouTube. So I listened to a lot of podcasts, read some books, you know, read blogs, that kind of thing. And that's really where I started. And I just went, oh my gosh, video is amazing. Video is amazing. And so my personal journey, in addition to starting a YouTube channel was to start sending, honestly, video text messages. So if that's one thing that agents or anyone in a small business or anyone in sales could take away from this podcast today, if you stop listening right after this, it would be send video text messages. I love and that. I essentially turned the, the camera around on myself and I would say, Hey, Kyle, it's Sarah with Chicago title. I know you're busy. And then I would essentially move myself to the front of the line with Kyle, the agent or Kyle, the lender or Kyle, the broker, because they had never gotten a video text message from anybody. And so it made them, it made me stand out. It doesn't mean that I closed or converted every agent right there on the spot. I minimized that funnel of standing out, raising awareness that I'm, I work for Chicago title and I'm here to help and serve. And how can I help you build your business? And I want to meet with you. Right. Um, And I stay top of mind. And so as soon as I started to gain traction with that, it's, that's all it took. And I was like, I'm in, I'm all in. So I want to talk for a second because I love, I don't do as much video texting anymore as I mainly do videos in messenger just to impact the power of the algorithm. And then I don't, I don't even need your phone number to be able to send you a DM, but the premise of it is still the same. And so when I talk to realtors about what we're talking about right now, the first question I get, which I'm sure you get this as well, is so do you just like record one video and then you text that out, like that video out to 50 people? Or are you recording a literal video for each person where you can say their name, make it personal? You know, how do you do that? And how do you coach the realtors to, to do that more efficiently? The answer is yes. Meaning, I think it depends on what is your end game, what's yeah. your goal and what's your purpose. So for me, I and still to this day. And when I started, it was a one-to-one video. Yeah. So if I wanted to get in front of Kyle, it was a personalized message for Kyle. I was saying Kyle's name at least twice in the video. Yeah. I had probably stalked Kyle on social media to find out if he just got back from a trip, if he had kids, if he loved to play sports. So I could maybe reference something in the video. Yep. And if I had to send 15 videos a day, I sent 15 videos a day. And what Love that it. also taught me is to not obsess about the video, to just say it, send it and move on. So good. And um, in terms of mass video, I use that now a little bit more. Like okay. let's say that I'm going to teach a class to a brokerage. I may make a video for that brokerage and say, Hey, XYZ brokerage at Sarah with Chicago title. So excited classes on Tuesday at 10. And I may send that out in a mass text, like through hit, hit them up or something like that. I love it. So it's not that one or the other is better or worse. It's, it's leveraging both the personal touch and also a little bit more of the generic when we're just trying to get a message out there. Yep. And I think, again, it depends on who's your audience and what's your end game, what's your goal. Yeah. So how, like, at what point did you look up and go, oh my gosh, realtors are the worst at all of this. I can take my teaching background and I can start educating and teaching classes about okay, all this stuff. All, let the record show. I, Kyle said that. I did not say that. <laughs> I, well, what's fascinating is like our stories are very similar. You know, I had a, I had this realization seven years ago that realtors were terrible at social media. And then it was my background as a pastor, which is very similar to yeah. your background as a teacher. I already had the teaching chops to be a good communicator from in front of a room, which is the same for you. Yeah. So, okay. First of all, I want to say I sat through your training, as you know, or your presentation a few weeks ago, and I did so much self-reflecting because I see the pastor in you. I mean, spiritual gifts test. Hello, pastor. Number one, yeah. spiritual gifts test teacher. Number one. Yeah. And I'd never really stopped to think about the difference between a pastoral gift and a teaching gift yeah. until I sat through your class because yeah. 
you are so much more soft and gracious. You lead, right? And I come at my audience a lot of times with like barking orders and being a teacher, you know, do this, sure. do this, do this. Sure. And I've really tried to think about your the way you present and incorporate that a little bit more just yeah. to soften. One of the other things I realized, and I'm, I'm going to answer your question in just a second. You spent the first half of the session addressing mindset. And I know as a teacher, that's probably intentional because you know your audience. You know, most of, of the course. people coming into your trainings are like, I hate video. I'm never going to be on video. And right. I'm only here because there's a free lunch or something, right. right? A lot of people who come to my classes are already converted in the sense that they're like, I know I should be using video. I just need help or I'm okay. already trying. I'm just not sure what to do. See the difference? Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. However, however, I do have people who are coming to church for the first time. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so fire and brimstone isn't always what they need. So anyway, I think my soul would die if I didn't get to teach. Yeah, me too. My soul would die. And so I I don't care what job I took. I would probably find a way to be like, can I teach a class about this? Yeah. Right. Even if it was like to people in HR who already teach others, you know, I I would probably be like, can I write a manual? Can I write some like how to's on? It's just like who I am. So when I got into the business, we would have these classes for these agents, these CE classes. And I was like, why are we paying someone else to come in and teach and outsourcing our value? Sarah, like, I I don't understand. I don't get it. Well, but again, when you listen and you look around, it's because a lot of people are terrified to stand up and do any kind of public speaking. Right. And they don't have the same giftings, not that ours are better than anybody else's. Like, I do not have the gift of hospitality. I want to vomit when somebody says, do you want to host a baby shower or sure. we, even friends? Can we come over and eat pizza on a Friday night? I'm just like, uh, I'm going to have to like offer you something to eat and drink. And, and that's um, my wife's number one gift. She, an she's, she's incredible. Am an I? Introvert? Yeah. I, I am not, I You're think as I've gotten, I think young, younger Kyle was extra, was 100% extroverted as I've gotten older. And maybe it's just cause I speak so much, which is just so incredibly fulfilling yet draining at the same time. Yeah. I find myself like, like the way you read about Jesus, like going away by himself after big events, mm-hmm. like that's me now. And so I think I'm probably whatever the tweener would be Ambivert. Of like, what is it? Ambivert. So yeah. So, so that, so maybe that's Google me. It. Google Ambivert. Um, You'll be like, that is me. Yeah. That's, you know, so that, that's probably what I would say, but this is such a fascinating conversation because that's a fascinating, fascinating. I don't fascinating. know if I finished that it's word. Fascinating, guys. We're just making up words today, <laughs> but I'm fascinated by this because what I hear, and I'm sure Sarah, you've heard this a lot is from people that, you know, I'm incredibly extroverted when I'm on stage. And so when that's who they meet, they're like, well, duh, of course you're good at this. That's your personality. And I think there's so much room in this video world for the introvert to be on camera more often. I mean, because an introverted person is probably exhausted by me. I'm exhausting to them. So they need somebody that's more their flavor in front of the camera talking to them. I mean, the, the amazing thing about video is that anybody now can do it. Right. You don't have to hire a videographer and an editor. You, you want to at some point maybe, but, and everybody has something to say. People say, my life is so boring. And I, I hate hearing that because I'm like, no, it's not. It's just a matter of let us decide that first of all, but guess what? My life is boring too. Right. So I think your original question was when, how did you decide or why did you decide to incorporate teaching? Because it's who I am. It's in my DNA, but also because I wanted our company and our team and our services to be almost a one-stop shop. Like why would we hire somebody down the street when we could, now I can't teach everything. I can't teach contracts. And I mean, there's, it makes sense to outsource some of that. Um, But I just wanted to do that. Um, And I think a little bit, my company was like, cause we had never done that before. Sure. Yeah. But I just went for it. And now it's become this great lead gen magnet, which I think everybody needs. They need to find their magnet. And I'm not saying your magnet is going to be teaching or public speaking. Yeah. But it's just been a great way, again, for me to shorten that cycle. And that's the other thing I try to teach agents is find something that people want and need so that it's a value to them and it adds value to their lives and it'll shorten that effort of trying to build up. Or and get in front of them. Well, it's the, you know, before we hit record, 
you know, you were like, I'm so sorry. I'm in one of my spare bedrooms. You know, like my background doesn't look cool. My lighting's not great. But what I love about the environment that you're in right now is it tells a story, right? Every background tells a story, right? My background's telling stories based on the different things that you could notice and go, oh, what's that? And and you've got a rocker, right? Yeah. Like there's a little rocker in there. There is. And that says Uganda. And these are from Uganda, these baskets and these yeah, so, pictures. So see, you're you're leaving. You, you should have you should have that. You should be angling the camera better so that we can see all those different little aspects. You know why I can't angle it very well? Why? Because I have my laptop on my daughter's, what is this called? Dollhouse. Oh, look at you just <laughs> it's multitasking. It's limited. So that was the other thing I was going to tell you about my story is that I got out of teaching and wanted to yeah. build a career so that I could foster. And I knew better than to take on a new career and children at the same time. Yeah. Um, alone. So I um, kind of got to a point in my career where I thought, okay, I think I can handle some more crazy. Heck and yeah. two sweet little babies showed up on my doorstep in August. Oh my gosh. They're still here with me. Um, one of them is five and the other is uh, two. Wow. And a brother and a sister, a boy and a girl. And they've just been the sweetest blessing in my life. It's amazing. My house so, is a mess. I so mean, now I know you you probably, I know as a, as a foster parent, like you can't put them in pictures, you can't put them on video, but do you do any video content that's like what fostering's teaching me? So I, here, here's one thing that I, I preach and I don't follow is, okay. um, and, and there's a reason for that. It's because when I was a teacher, I had really no social media presence because sure. I did not want my students to find me and ruin my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. And I wanted, I, I kind of enjoy that level of privacy. So one yeah. thing that I've not incorporated that I always tell agents they should incorporate is their personal life. And the cool yeah. thing again about social media and video is that you can dictate how much you reveal right. and what that looks like, which is really cool. I have not done a good job of that mostly because I tend to hold things tightly, but yes, I have two TikTok accounts. And on one of my TikTok accounts, I do talk a little bit more about what it's like to be single and foster or what it's like to foster. Yeah. Um, but I've only just started to reveal that a little bit more okay. um, in the last couple of weeks. I love that. And that what I think the realtors that we work with don't understand is like, once somebody knows you're in real estate, there's a great chance that they may not technically need you for five years. So if your only hook is I want to be the realtor, that serves you and your family, they could say yes, but technically that yes doesn't come to fruition for years. But if we do a good job being ourselves, telling the stories of what we're doing throughout the day, what we did last weekend, now we're, we're kind of sinking our teeth in deeper. And to me, this is where we really begin to get referrals from people because we're showing up as a human in their lives, not just as a real estate agent. Because you make me laugh you. because you, you entertain me because you yeah. teach me something every time I go on your channel, essentially, right. You're always showing me how to get stains out of laundry or how to grow tomatoes in my backyard. Right. right. And so it stands yep. out to me because you're just adding value in a way that's organic. Right. So yes, I totally agree with you. And I, I, I was teaching a class last week and I said to an agent, we already know you're a realtor. You don't need to keep right. telling us like, yes, there is this stay top of mind, stay in front of them. But that's like an awareness campaign. And for yeah. most of the people on your Facebook page, she agreed. I said, would you, would you agree that most people who follow you or are friends with you on Facebook know you're a realtor? And she said, no, all of them do. Right. I said, okay, then you need to move away. You need to move on from the awareness for those people and start engagement. The engagement base comes next, right. like start adding value. So I think that's what I'm trying to help agents realize is that marketing can actually be really simple. You can hire companies and, and coaches sure. to manage your social media, but, but you don't have to, you can really simplify it and just have some pillars yeah. And some do's and don'ts that you follow and humanize yourself and your brand. Yeah. And um, that's going to go so much farther. 100%. I want to know, because I don't often get to interview people on my podcast that teach inside of the same vein as I do, which is super fun. And so we can teach together sometime if you want. To. I would love to do that. We'll you be yin just... and yang because you'll be the nice one that's like, that's you right. Might wanna, you might want to consider, like, I noticed in your presentation, you're like, you might want to consider TikTok, but anyway, I mean, not really, right? Or you said something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
everyone in the audience was like, oh, thank you, because they don't want to hear it. They're not ready for it. They, right. you know, they it's an app for kids who dance or whatever. Right. Whereas right. I'm the one that's standing up at the podium and I'm like, if you don't do TikTok, then you're just you're going to become a dinosaur. <laughs> and you know what? It's what you true. just said isn't but it, it's not like that's not not true. Right. I think. Well, so I'll be good. So my cop point is, you're so much nicer. Cop. You're so much. You know, nicer. It, it's just about the. I think the I think the reason because there are times that I'm very not nice. Oh, OK. And now in a room where no one knows me, I'm not going to go into that character very often because like they know you. Right. So you've kind of earned that rapport with them to be able to be a jerk to some degree <laughs> and they receive it. Right. Yeah. And so I know how to fill my audience and know when that's appropriate for me as a guy that travels all over the country and does this. Yeah. Specifically with TikTok, I think this is an interesting conversation for people to hear. Like, is I think as the experts of this, if we're not careful, we just want to shove down people's throats what they should be doing. And if we don't first cast vision for the danger of what happens when you don't, we're just barking at a wall that's already closed off to us. Right. So then sometimes I think that's why our bark gets even louder. <laughs> because in our minds, we're like, they're still not listening. I know. So if I could just get crazier. And so I just decided that like, there's not very many experts like me that are out there pastoring people into making this feel like it's their decision to do this. Because when it's your decision, you're going to be committed to it. Well, that's why you're a pastor and I'm a teacher, you know, and uh, <laughs> because your approach is so much softer. And I have really, I've tried to shift. I mean, I'm kind of from one social media person to another, I'm, you know, it's just saying TikTok or die, which is not really true for everyone. And it's not sure. the right platform for everyone. And you don't. So what I've started saying is it's not, should I be making videos? That's actually, that's not the question. That's the answer. Right. Like, the answer is you should be making video. Right. The question is, who do you want to make video for? And where do you want that content to live? Right. And maybe the best place for it to live. Hey, plug, plug, by the way, is Facebook Reels, because that's different than Instagram Reels. And it's right. not TikTok. Right. Um, and maybe it is the absolute best place for you to go. Or maybe you don't make videos at all. To your point, you share this, you just go live. So again, that's video though. Or maybe you don't put any of your video content on any social media platform. You just send video text messages or videos right. through email. And that's, my thing is, if I can get you to just take some form of action, then I'm going to help you win, right? So for a lot of people, if you're not sending video text messages out, like just start doing that. For birthdays, holidays, right? whatever, Any, just you thinking know, I, about you. I was recording a podcast episode yesterday, which it won't make sense when it airs because March Madness will be over before then. But I'll, and then it also won't make sense when they hear this episode. But hopefully the the underlying idea will. But like I was I was talking yesterday about, okay, we know that Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, and Villanova are the four colleges in the final four. You have people in your city that went to those schools. And so why are you not sending videos out? And Sarah, if I knew that you went to North Carolina, that I'm like, Sarah, hey, it's Kyle. I saw that your team, that Carolina Blue is in the final four. Do y'all have room for another bandwagon fan? Because I think I think I want them to be my team for for this this final four run. Just something I simple that, like that. I, yeah, I I talk a lot to my agents about become obsessed with other people. Yeah, and find I out what that. they're obsessed with because then you can just to your point comment or say something about what they love. Right. I love that. It doesn't really matter if you love it. It one hundred percent doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter. And I'm gonna still what you just said. And I might give you credit a couple of times, but then at some point I'll forget, but I love that become obsessed with other people. I mean, Jesus I think, was obsessed with other people. 100%. I think that's the true secret weapon of social media for what our people are trying to do. So you asked earlier, like, when did you realize agents were the worst at this? And you know, I think it's, it's not totally their fault. Those who what? are you about to or... be, are you about to be good cop for a second? <laughs> yes. So evidence of success, they've been told somewhere along the way. Yeah. Post XYZ content. Right. Post how many homes you've sold, how many transactions you did this year or this month, how much you have in volume. And I just, you know, I've asked, and maybe you said this too, when I was listening to you, I can't remember, but I don't know how many other people in different industries will talk about that. Like I never posted as a teacher, 
how many kids passed or failed an assessment or, right. you know, whatever. Right. So I think my challenge to them is if you want to post your evidence of success, let's look at doing it through a different lens. Like let's yeah. just change the format, make someone else the hero, let someone else brag on you. Mm-hmm. So to your point about the final four and March Madness, it's looking for, okay, the content is there, but maybe we just shape it or form it or use it in a different way. Right. Rather than look at me, look at me, I, 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 me, me, me. And what's really interesting is behind closed doors, most of the agents I talk to one-on-one small group or my classes, they're rolling their eyes at other agents who are posting content like that. And that's why they don't want to be on social media because they're like, I don't want to look like that agent. Right. So if I'm like, well, if that's the only thing standing in your way is this perception of, I don't want to look like them, then that's easy. We can fix that. So let's not let that be the reason you don't use or social media or video. Well, and unfortunately, that's probably just the current reason why they don't. And then the and then the moment you crush that, then they're going to go find, you know, I don't like my voice. I know. I don't know what to talk about, you know. But a good um, salesperson knows how to overcome objections. So then I would say to that, no problem. That's right. Let's go out and shoot some flowers that are like blowing in the wind. We'll shoot B-roll footage. Right. And then you can do a, vo- a voiceover. And then they're like, I don't like my voice. I'm like, okay, we'll shoot the flowers. And then you can do an audio, you know, somebody else can do it. Or you can use captions. I don't care. <laughs> You know, I, I just feel like we can come up with every idea under the sun, which we probably have to to try to help. Like the pain is great enough. Like their business starts going backwards and they don't understand why. Or I meet the random realtor that truly like loves serving people way more than they than they care about making money. I can tug at that person's heart and get them to see like if you truly love people, there's no greater avenue to love them than through the power of video. And that's how I can get them to show up. But as long as they remain more vain and all about themselves, and then they only want to be in the best light, we can get them to video, but it's hard to get them off of themselves. Well, and again, I think a lot of that is the industry has done that to them. There's been a message there about shiny, glossy, make it look like you're kind of a rock star. Um, And they see other brokerages doing that or other agents doing that. And they feel like, well, if I just get on with a messy hair, a a messy bun, I'm not going to look professional. People are going to think I'm not selling. So there's a, there's a, a paradigm shift also. Yeah. And I get it. I really do. Going back to kind of the pastoral versus yeah. like barking at them is kind of meeting them where they're at. I mean, there's right. a whole generation where they didn't grow up putting themselves on camera and sharing every aspect of their life. They didn't even have that option. I, we barely, you and I barely right. had that option. We really right. didn't until college or later. We yeah. adapted. It was no big deal. So I can appreciate that where they're like, you know, my mom would never leave the house without lipstick on. So she would never get on camera when her face wasn't ready. Right. So there's a whole mindset. There are people who are like, that's not appropriate. That's not professional. Yeah. Um, 100%. Just addressing that. And and even, even in the company that in the room that you and I met in, right. That brokerage probably sends out graphics every month with people's numbers on them. And so they're being torn down the middle by people like us trying to come in and say, guys, there's a better way. And then the literal companies they work for are giving them these these graphics to go and brag and, you know, put yourself up on a pedestal. And so, you know, it's probably a fight that we'll just have to say, we're going to fight this fight for the betterment of this industry until we can't fight it anymore. And it's fun. I think it's a fun fight because, you know, you were saying you can preach all day long. I think again, and this is what video and just finding out who you are and your brand as an agent. Yeah. This should be fun. It should be fun. South by Southwest was last week in Austin, if you're familiar with that. And they had a panel of people who were on TikTok, creators on TikTok, and they were all different creators in terms of followers and what their content was about. And the consensus for all of them, take away the fact that they're TikTok creators. Let's just say they're video, they're content creators who happen to put their content on video, right? Right. And the the video platform happens to be TikTok, right? So what they all said is we have no idea what we're doing. We have no idea what we're doing. We just have fun. And that's what I want. That would be my wish for a lot of people, whether you're a small business owner, an agent or lender is just have fun and allow yourself to fall forward. Allow yourself to figure out through the videos that you make, the kind of videos you should be making, the kind of videos you shouldn't be making because the ones that you think you should be making may not perform the way you think they will in front of your audience and your audience people who are doing life with you right here might wind up loving this kind of content. Absolutely. And it's content about your dog or your kid or your health journey or whatever it is. Yeah. So See, I, what's get the, <laughs> I, I love it. I love the fire. 
you can bring the fire as often as you'd like. What would be as we kind of tie a pretty bow on this thing? What would be like one if you could just give one tip in the last 60 seconds of this episode? What what would it be to the the realtors listening? So my friend Todd Collins, I don't know if you follow him. He is also on social media. He's a marketer. He owns okay. a called Beamed Media. Okay. And he's a friend of mine and he, I love this phrase and I use it now in almost every single one of my classes. So I have to give him credit. Okay. But the answer for everything is more than zero. The answer Mm. for everything is more than zero. So how many times a day should you pray? More than zero. zero. How many handwritten cards should you be writing a day? How many phone calls should you be making? How many videos should you be making a day? So good. More than zero. So Um, good. So that would be my hot tip for anyone listening today is, and it doesn't mean you have to publish the video or post it anywhere. Just make it. Right. And put it in your Google drive or wherever you store your content, you know? So good. (laughs) So good. Sarah, how people follow you after they hear you crush this episode? Uh, Thank you. So um, another hot tip would be to streamline your social media handle. So if you're Kyle Draper on one platform, you need to be Kyle Draper on every platform. Platform. Right. Yep. Otherwise, that's like inviting people over to your house and giving them six different addresses. Um, they're going to be like, true. I don't know where to go. And I'm so annoyed. So forget it. I'm not coming. Yep. Or you send them to the wrong location and they're like, this is not where. Okay. So anyway, my point is I'm Texas title girl, all one word, T-E-X-A-S title, T-I-T-L-E. Is that right? Girl. Yeah. On TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. I love it. That's also my email. So I try to post content that helps agents and small business owners with ways to get on video and just do do fun things with social media. So good. I'm going to come back down there so we can teach a class together. Please do. So Please do. that would be so fun. You pick the brokerage that you want to bless them with our presence and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll come show up down there. Okay. Does it have to just be one? I have several in mind. No, we could, we can maybe hit three in one day. Let's That'd just, be awesome. let's just go crazy. <laughs> That would be so awesome. I'd be so honored. Kyle, thank you so much again for having me on your podcast. You are so time. welcome. I'm trying to get one of my agents to start a podcast. So okay. I might have you let to... me know how I can help. And you, yeah. I don't know why you don't have a podcast. So you, you should probably have a podcast. Well, I don't know. A single foster mom only has so many hours in the day. That's true. But oh. we can knock this out. Well, we don't have time for this, but in another episode. I have people that make like it all happen. So that's right. Be looking for part two. Sarah, you're the best. Thank you for coming on and, and for adding so much value. And guys, thank you for listening. This has been an incredible episode. Don't take notes, take action. And we'll be back soon with a really cool person with an even cooler story. Cooler than mine? Right, no, probably not. But, you know. More than zero, guys. Hashtag more, more than, than zero. zero. See ya. Bye.